is the uh, we need some more guys to sign up for Shucky. All right, we got him shucking up here. A full stage of guys. Yeah, you definitely heard what you heard. So along with getting some visual content for you guys, I got some audio content as well, accidentally on purpose. But yeah, I can kind of attest to the fact of what she was saying. Yeah, there was definitely some grab woman by the pussy vibes going on out there. Yeah, and where it is there, I am talking about the Oyster Festival that I attended on February 4th, Sunday, yeah. So I went out there. It was the 40th annual Oyster Festival. Y'all know I love my seafood. Went to the Blue Crab Festival last year. Had to go this year. Um, always really wanted to go since it's the 40th year. I think they started it around 1980s, but my interest in going really didn't happen until about 2012, 2013. Only because I used to work in the area, so I always used to see like advertisements and marketing or banners posted when they used to have the event. So that kind of sparked my curiosity in wanting to go. Because again, I love my seafood. But over the last decade, it was basically hit and miss, where I actually misses because I actually never attended because when I would think about going, I would look it up and the event had already happened. So yeah, I never really was able to go. But this year I bought my tickets um, Friday and was able to attend on Sunday. Now, this is supposed to be the world's largest, according to their event page, world's largest oyster festival. Don't know how true that is. I guess if they put it on the event page, it really is true, I guess. Um, didn't even know it was a thing for the world. But yeah, it's the world's largest oyster festival. So got my tickets, heading on out there on Sunday. And they give you a general address. And the address is basically not where the actual event is happening because it's in a field. So the field really doesn't have an address. But once you drive closer to the event, you can kind of tell by the direction of traffic where things are happening. Plus, they had a police presence, which I kind of appreciated because I was in the lane that had to cross over to turn to the pathway that led to the parking area. And because I had to cross over, yeah, traffic was not stopping because of how heavily populated the event was or how heavily attended the event was. So people were not like being courteous at all. So the police presence was definitely, you know, very convenient for us who were in that lane because they actually, he actually stopped traffic and allowed us to turn in because other than that, we probably would have been waiting forever just to be able to turn in. But everything was pretty much organized, like the parking lot attendants kind of like directed traffic. So there wasn't a, like a free for all because again, it was heavily populated. A lot of people were out there. So yeah having like parking lot attendants telling you actually where to park and yeah, kind of take the guesswork out of, you know, should I park here or, you know, whatnot. So yeah, it was pretty easy getting access to the parking area. Now, once I got out of the parking area, that's when I thought I felt like I was duped by the meteorologist because I wasn't told anything about the wind, the icy cold bone chilling wind that was happening out there now. I felt a little underdressed because I dressed according to what I read as far as the weather goes. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing everybody else in their like coats, their puffers, their scullies, their knit caps. I was like, okay, so I definitely didn't get the memo and I definitely didn't know that there was going to be a windy, you know, spell out there. And not only the wind, but the bone chilling wind. And when the wind wasn't blowing, the weather was fine. So. Yeah, I felt comfortable wearing what I was wearing when the wind wasn't blowing, but when it was blowing, yeah, I felt like I needed a coat. So immediately I felt uncomfortable. Initially, when you come up, you see four lines. The volunteers came up and they were saying, yeah, this is the line to the checkpoint. 
after you get cleared past the checkpoint, you can go off in whichever, you know, entrance based upon the signage that you need to go. But yeah, this is basically for the checkpoint and the checkpoint. Let's talk about that. <laughs> it definitely was giving TSA vibes. On their event page, they did say, yeah, you cannot bring certain things. There's a clear bag policy. You do not bring any outside food, any outside drinks, and yeah, tents, and some other things that they listed do not bring. And they were making sure that you did not bring. Like, there were people in front of me who had wagons, and inside their wagons, they had like multiple folding chairs, and their multiple folding chairs were inside individual bags. So these people were going through the individual bags, opening up these folding chairs, the bags, and they were going all up and through that. There was a clear bag policy. I had a clear bag, but I guess people didn't read the memo or didn't care. So if you had a handbag, a backpack, yes, they was going all up and through there. You would think he was at TSA because they were very thorough. Now, because I followed the rules, I got waved through. They just glanced at my little clear bag and I was allowed to go towards the bow entrance gate. Entered the event. Now, I'm still having a little PTSD from the Blue Crab Festival after standing in line for like a thousand years. So if you hadn't seen that vlog, yeah, it was a long wait to get some crabs. So I'm thinking it's going to be the same thing when it came to the oysters. So instead of moseying around and looking around and seeing what vendors and stuff out there, I just made a beeline to where the oyster station was. And after walking for some while, I really couldn't find it. So I asked a couple of volunteers. They didn't know. So I asked a third volunteer and they kind of like pointed me in a general direction saying it's over on that side. So went over on that side and immediately I saw it. It was clear as day. Now when I'm walking up to the station, there are people out there in red shirts and everybody is carrying buckets. So I was a little confused at that point because again, on the event page, I didn't really read anywhere where I needed to provide my own bucket. Yeah, so there were people standing out there, like at least 30 of them, and predominantly kids. And they were just standing out there talking, holding buckets. So yeah, at that point, I was a little confused. For one, it wasn't really a line formation. So is this a line? And two, did I need a bucket? So I made my way there and I kind of told her I wanted to purchase some um, uh, bucket of oysters. And I'm looking around because on the website, they did say that there are some vendors who took um, credit card payments, but I didn't see a credit card reader. I didn't see a cash register. So I kind of asked her, you know, what method of payments do you take? Cause I want to get a bucket of oysters. And she was saying, well, you need food and drink tickets. Now I did read that on the website as well, but the food and drink tickets I thought were for the food and drink vendors. I didn't know was pertaining to the oysters. So I kind of asked her, well, where do you purchase that from? And she was directing me all the way to the front. Now, mind you, I done been walking like forever. <laughs> so I had to walk all the way back there. So reluctantly, I started walking. 10 steps in, I looked to the left and I saw a food and beverage station and there was nobody over there. You know, this little ticket purchase area. So I made a beeline over there and yeah, there was nobody there. And I went ahead and I bought me some tickets. Now these tickets, they come in a sheet of $10. So there are five $2 tickets on one sheet. So I bought $30 worth, so three sheets um, totaling, yeah, $10 each, so it's $30 because I want to buy the Chesapeake Bay oysters. Now I always eat local clusters. So I wanted to try something different. Never had Chesapeake Bay oysters. They were $24, so I bought the $30 ticket. Now. After purchasing the ticket, still, there is no line at the oyster station. Went up there with no problem. They just had a freshly steamed batch of oysters just coming off the steamer and they were placing it in buckets. So I was one of the first people to got some of those. So after I got it, paid my low $24 and I went and set up my little picnic area. I had my waterproof blanket. I came prepared, y'all. I had dry towels. I had wet towels. I had hand sanitizer. I had my shucking knife and I had the butter knife. Now I had the butter knife out there because I knew I was going to use that because you know, I'm a professional oyster eater and I know the butter knife really gets the job done better than the shucking knife. So I definitely had it out there, but I brought the shucking knife just so I didn't look ghetto. But yeah, the shucking knife that was out there, but I really didn't use it at all. It was just a prop or whatever, but yeah, I, I like the butter knife better. So as I'm sitting down and eating, this one is like really relentless. It was like 
blowing so hard that it was lifting up the blanket. So as I'm eating oysters, I'm using oyster shells as a placement holder to try to keep the, the blankets down. Now the little churn that I told y'all with the red shirts and the buckets that were standing in front of the oyster stations, well, I guess they're the recycling team because they kept coming by and swiping my little oyster shells that I kept putting down. Now there's a whole bunch of them. So after you don't tell one, you would think they would tell their friends like, yeah, she needs some to hold down the blanket so don't take all, but no. Every time they see oyster shell, they just come snatch it. So you have to keep telling them over and over and over. So that was getting exhausting. I was cold. And the longer I ate, because of how cold the wind was blowing, it was like cooling off the oysters. So the closer you get to the bottom, the cooler it was. And I really like my seafood hot. So yeah, I kind of like forced myself to kind of finish eating because yeah, <laughs> I don't like cold seafood. Cool seafood, yeah, I like it hot. And because of the temperature outside, it was, yeah, getting a little difficult for me to finish eating. But yeah, I paid for it and didn't want to carry it with me. So I kind of like finished, forced myself to eat it. So let's talk about the Chesapeake Bay oysters. Okay. So I always eat local clusters and I wanted to try something different. Okay. If I had to compare the two, when it comes to the local clusters, you know what a cluster, you get multiple oysters on one shell. Now, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, sometimes the shell is empty or it has mud in it. With the Chesapeake Bay oysters, every shell you get an oyster and it's either juicy or juicier. The taste is very much the same, so there's really not a difference in taste. So yeah, I did try that for the first time and yeah, to my surprise, it tastes pretty much the same, but yeah. And after I finished, I was ready to go. So I started cleaning up my area figure on the way out, I'll get some content for the vlog or whatnot. And as I'm filming, I'm hearing the host say, they're having an oyster shucking and oyster eating contest in 30 minutes. So I know oyster shucking and oyster eating, I know what that is, but I wanna know what the hell does that look like in the form of a contest? So it kind of piqued my curiosity and they say like 30 minutes. So I was like, okay, so I wanna wait to see this. This is where the event, <laughs> <laughs> it's given like different like small town vibes a little bit and it wasn't the contest itself that kind of created the small townness it was the carrying on about the contest like they had reigning champions like people come here year after year after year to compete in these contests like there's a reigning champion in each category reigning champions of men reigning champions of women like and they come I'm dead ass serious down here just for the specific purpose of like competing one girl she had her own little fan base they had like banners they had her face on poles and yeah it was real like serious so it was definitely giving like small town vibes like yeah we live in a small town we got one stoplight we got one gas station we hang out in parking lots and drag race up and down the road because we really ain't got nothing to do so the carrying on kind of reminded me like yeah we ain't got shit to do but shut some oysters and, and swallow down some like oysters yeah it was kind of like trippy just to like see it and people were all into it after i record footage and kind of chuckled at the whole shenanigans of it all. I was ready to go. If I was to rate this whole experience and tell you whether or not I would attend again, um, the Blue Crab Festival, let me just start with that. As chaotic and unorganized and yeah, exhausting in the beginning it was. I am definitely going back there again because it kind of gave like backyard cookout vibes with a whole bunch of strangers. It's like, you came with your people, they came with their people. I see you, you see me, we intermingling. It was just like very welcoming. It was very diverse and it was a vibe for sure. Now here, outside of the oysters, there really wasn't anything else. Um, it was not as diverse at all. Um, it didn't feel very welcoming when the DJ was trying to be diverse in playing, you know, a diverse selection of music. The host got on the mic and said, yeah, I'm gonna need you to stop playing that and play me some old white man music. Yeah, <laughs> that was said. So 
Yeah, if I had to rate it one out of 10, I would give it a three. And only because I got to try some oysters that I never really tried before. Outside of, you know, trying something new for the first time, yeah, there really wasn't anything special about being out there. Don't think I ever will go, don't even recommend people going. Yeah, especially if you look like me. Um, I would just recommend you go to a restaurant to eat some oysters, go buy your own oysters. Yeah, it's really not that serious. But the Blue Crab Festival, yeah. And even as organized, the VIP area was, the Oyster Festival VIP area was on point. They had porta parties like the porta parties had like outside low wash stations where you could wash and dry your hands or whatever and the brew craft festival i didn't see a porta party out there but i will be going to the place that didn't have porta parties <laughs> I, I i really would yeah so yeah that's my low rating review so i just stopped in briefly just to you know share my experience and yeah now i'm going to close up and i'll see you guys on the next vlog okay Mm okay.